Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Liam with AWS here in New York City with Billy from Frame.io. Hi. Billy, tell me a little bit what Frame.io does. Yeah, Frame.io um, allows uh, customers to upload content to our website and to share that with uh, other people on their team to get fast feedback using like time-based comments and annotations on the video. So you guys must process a tremendous amount of video in a given day. How do you go about doing that? Yeah. Um, so. Uh, in terms of our video encoding, um, we use CloudWatch events that will get triggered when an upload is uh, uh, uploaded into an S3 bucket. And that CloudWatch event will trigger step functions. So in this workflow, step functions must be doing a lot of different things. What are the type of uh, states you're managing or things you're doing? Yeah, for sure. So step functions uh, we use to orchestrate our Lambda functions. And also for video encoding, because of uh, the time that it takes to encode video, we need to sh uh, ship that processing off to ECS. Uh, so with step functions, uh, we use that to trigger a lambda, which will be invoking uh, or try attempting to run a task in ECS. If that task fails, uh, it will be retried by step functions. I see you're using Spot as well. Are you using entirely Spot? Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, so we're using Spot Fleet with ECS. And we was using reserved instances, but we found with Spot Fleet we could greatly reduce our, uh, our EC2 costs. So what I frequently hear from customers is that with Spot Fleet, the fact that the instance can be reclaimed kind of makes them concerned on using it. How, how is your experience with Spot Fleet? Yeah, so with Spotfleet, we found that we hardly see any terminated instances. The way that Spotfleet works by allowing you to diversify your cluster with several different instant types across multiple availability zones uh, really help reduce the amount of times that we see a terminated instance. But it can happen, so you, you must account for that, correct? Definitely. And we utilize step functions to, uh, to handle that. When an instance gets removed from Spotfleet, uh, ECS will classify any task that was running on that instance as a failed task. When that happens, our step functions will be retrying that task. And it will run that task again through ECS back onto Spotfleet. And, and, and for that, it doesn't slow your workflow down much at all because the instance is processed almost immediately. Exactly, yes. yes. Right, I see you have Lambda in here. Can you talk a little bit about what you use Lambda for in this workflow? Yeah, sure. So Spotfleet, you know, we do get a lot of reduced um, costs by just using Spotfleet. But obviously, we also want to include some auto scaling around it. Um, so for scale up, we just use a simple CloudWatch metric, uh, CPU utilization metric. Um, but then for scale down, we need to ensure that when we uh, terminate instance, that instance isn't running any tasks. So to do that, what happens is we have a CloudWatch scheduled event that will trigger that Lambda function every minute. And that Lambda function will do various checks before uh, scaling down an instance. So the Lambda function will query CloudWatch to see if the ECS cluster CPU utilization is below a certain threshold that we deem suitable to be, uh, for us to start scaling down. Uh, if that's the case, then the Lambda function will start iterating through the instances. And for each instance, it will query ECS uh, to see if there's any tasks running on that instance. If, that, if there isn't any tasks, then Lambda will query uh, Spotfleet to see if that instance uh, was within is older than five minutes. If it's older than five minutes, that Lambda function will then terminate the instance from Spotfleet, and then it will also adjust the target capacity of the Spotfleet to match uh, to compensate for that lost instance that we've that we've removed. So the five minutes. What was the use of the five minute check? So the five minutes is kind of like our cool down. Uh, so we don't want to be terminating any instances that currently that we've actually just recently scaled up and it's you know, going through the boot up phase and stuff, yeah. 
So you're using Lambda to not only make sure that the ECS cluster is scaled at the right level, so you're not, even with Spot, you're not over-provisioned for what you're doing. You're also using Lambda to check to see if the cluster is busy processing a video, because you wouldn't want to scale down in the middle of an encode job. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and with a workflow like this and using post-production assets, I, I assume security must be a massive concern. How do you achieve the security that Frame.io needs to get their jobs done? Yeah, definitely. So uh, with security, we make sure that we're using uh, I, uh, like least privileged IM, IM policies around on for our Lambda functions and step functions and ECS tasks. Very nice. Uh, so are there any kind of future thinking thoughts you've got for this workflow? Yeah, sure. We're, we are experimenting with uh, split and stitch encoding to improve our encoding times, utilizing uh, the scalability of Lambda functions and ECS. So can you talk a little bit about split and stitch, how that works? Yeah, with split and stitch, the idea would be we can split a video into several chunks, and we can distribute those chunks across multiple Lambda functions or multiple ECS uh, container instances. All right, so it looks like you have a highly available, low-cost, secure architecture for processing massive amounts of video. Uh, thank you for showing us this. Thank you. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.